Hi, I'm Jeff. This is Naveen. So <clears throat> a couple years ago, we started uh, Lendo. We had uh, we'd started a couple companies. We had employees all over the world. And they kept coming to us asking for loans, which didn't make a lot of sense, since they were highly employable, hardworking. Uh, so we started digging into the problem. And uh, it turned out that uh, this wasn't just a problem for employees we had in places like the Philippines and China and the Ukraine. It was a very broad problem. And then we stumbled upon one thing that completely changed our life, which was uh, microfinance. It was sort of the idea that you can involve the crowd in the process. So we, we kind of looked at each other, talked to our, our third co-founder, and had a very simple theory, which is if it could work in microfinance where everyone repays, why couldn't this work uh, online targeting the middle class? And uh, we took inspiration from, some, from a, a speech from Zuckerberg right before we launched in, uh, in early um, 2011, where uh, he said that every business is going to become social. So what we're essentially doing is using social and the big data that goes with it to administer credit in a part of the world where there isn't really a credit infrastructure. <coughs> we were founded in 2011, got over close to a million members. We integrate with LinkedIn, Google, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, the service-oriented architecture. Our, our um, development team is based here and uh, in the Philippines. And um, we basically sit at the intersection of social, mobile, the cloud, and algorithms to use these new data sources to, to extend credit. Now credit, the credit business to us is really boils down to three things. You have to aggregate demand, you have to make a good underwriting decision, and you have to collect. And it turns out when you, when you use big data and you involve the crowd, all three of these get better. We started with a couple hundred people who we knew and trusted because we'd worked with them. We had them try the system, connect their, their online social footprint. And then we said, do any of you want a loan? And some of them did. They said, great, just have to invite some of your friends in. Um, they then invited their friends in, some of those friends need loans, and so on and so on and so on. So our, the, the demand has just been growing ever since we, we launched. Um, we use that data from the, from the applicant, but also from their community. Who's willing to be a reference? What's, what type of people are they connected to? Um, and then also we, we work with the community on the collection side. So w with some of the Lendo loans, if you don't uh, repay, your friends who are references May, may call you up and say, hey, how, how come you haven't paid that? Because your repayment is affecting my ability to borrow. And we've done a lot around experimentation around the social messaging to, to increase the, that repayment. So uh, why is this possible? I think Mary Meeker kind of summarized it best with the idea that on the internet, there's just so much information. There's really, you can't have the same type of, uh, you can use that data. You can empower customers to use that data to prove who they are. Um, and we've done that online, we've done that through, through mobile, and uh, just last, last week we announced we're doing that 100% through Facebook, which you know, isn't a big deal here, but in parts of the world, access to Facebook is actually subsidized by the carrier. So it makes it much easier for people making, say, $300 a month, $200 a month, to access it without having to ha play for, uh, pay a data program. So, you want to talk? Sure. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure how uh, technical the audience is or how technical I'm allowed to be, but this will, there's going to be some, uh, some technical stuff here, um, probably an equation or two. Um, so uh, Jeff, uh, when, when I first met Jeff, uh, part of the story here I want to tell is about growth and how as a startup, as a three-year-old company, how our data needs have grown and how we have grown with it and what have we learned uh, that can possibly um, help somebody else. That's sort of where, um, where, 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 where I want to go with, 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 my, uh, with the data part here. So uh, when, when uh, Jeff and I first met, he presented the, you know, the problem, which was, uh, well, we want to launch a service. Uh, we want to look at people's social media. And can we actually decide who to give loans to? Can we decide who to market to? Can we decide who to give loans to? So. Um, uh, the question then, as a startup CTO, you ask yourself is, well, how will we store this information? And um, uh, how will we store this information, uh, except I don't know what the information looks like, I don't know how the growth is going to be, I don't know what any of this stuff actually looks like. So when you know nothing and you can plan for nothing, my uh, comfort food database is, uh, is, is MongoDB. So that, 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 that's what I picked. That's, that's um, MongoDB, the database for people who don't know anything. Um, the, maybe that's not a very good tagline. Um, so 
so we we are 100% based on Amazon Web uh, on Amazon Web Services uh, right now still. Uh, it's uh, all around the world. We have uh, data centers in different places. Uh, we store the social data from uh, all the networks that, that Jeff mentioned. Um, it's completely opt-in, so uh, our members choose to give us data. We don't scrape anything. We have, uh, it's all done via OAuth, totally on the up and up. We, our members give us specific permissions. We ask for specific permissions. Facebook says, you know, Lendo wants this information. Are you okay with it? There is a, you know, so it's completely opt-in. And so our database is now uh, uh, about, uh, you know, approaching five terabytes now, uh, to, uh, two billion odd records. So um, uh, before I go into uh, sort of um, more technical things, what can we do with this? So here's a small sample network showing you good and bad borrowers represented in a graph, right? And even where you don't think, um, I'm not sure actually if I can point with this. Can I point with this? Um, can you guys see this little red dot here? Yeah. Okay. So even in, uh, so uh, if you do network analysis of this, it turns out that um, reds and blues clump together, generally speaking, right? And even when in the middle here, um, you think that the reds and blues are intermingling, actually, if you, um, whoops, if you, how do I go to that? There, actually, if you uh, cluster using a clustering, some clustering software, you find that uh, the, you know, they're actually separated in, in the third dimension. So um, this has been our biggest finding so far, is that uh, this phenomenon of birds of a feather flock together is really very, very evident. We can see when someone applies for a loan and someone t takes out a loan uh, with us, uh, we can see how they perform, how people in their network perform. We've had entire networks of people take out loans with us. And we can see um, the impact that this has. And we can, in the absence of, not, of any other information, in the absence of a credit score, in the absence of um, any other data about, in the absence of a national ID, um, we can best predict how you are going to perform by knowing how your friends have actually performed, how your community has performed. Even your community's two degrees out has performed. Um, uh, that, and that, 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 that's been true in every country where we've built uh, a, a model for credit underwriting. It's true for marketing, it's true for collections, it's true all across the board. This has been our, um, uh, sort of our um, uh, confirmation of a gut instinct that, that we had when we began Lendo. Um, uh, so um, the, the, uh, the social data does add value. Here is, a, a, you know, a, uh, in a, we don't have a credit score in most of the countries where we operate for most of our markets. Um, and uh, the red are the bad borrowers and the yellow are the good borrowers. And this is using traditional data only, like demographic data and the kinds of data that a, class, that a bank would use. Uh, we don't get very good separation. And if you actually add to it the value of uh, the, what the network is providing us, plus uh, uh, you know, the language uh, data th that we have about uh, you know, all the messages that they send, the st Facebook status update, et cetera, it really allows us to separate the good and the bad borrowers in a much better way. Um, again, some uh, more slides. I, I won't delve into this. Um, how am I doing on time? Five more minutes? Okay. So, um, so uh, I just want to spend five minutes talking about growth and uh, one little nugget of um, learning that we've had uh, that I want to focus on as we talk about growth, data growth. So we, as I mentioned, uh, MongoDB, we started there. And um, as, uh, you know, as our members grew, we added more indexes. The database become, uh, started going larger. So here's how you begin, how we began. We have user data and we have social data. Um, and you put them in the same database. It doesn't really matter. You know, it's, we were small. We have 10,000 members, 20,000 members. It turns out that as you start to have 100,000 members, this is what happens. Um, the social data just grows a lot faster exponentially because especially in, in our markets, in, our, in the countries where we operate, people, uh, uh, like ha more than half of our members have a thousand plus faith friends on Facebook, right? So it's just, uh, the amount of data is just huge. Um, and it far dwarfs the real data, the, the classic uh, me member data that you would, uh, that you would store. And so we kept on moving to, you know, we were Amazon-based, and we don't have a, didn't have a sysadmin at that point. So we just kept on going to larger and larger Amazon instances. Amazon makes it easy to pay them more money, right? So we were, just, so we were on this ginormous machine with, uh, with, uh, with 32 CPUs and 250 obscene amounts of RAM and uh, at, at an obscene cost. 
Um, you know, the, we, we, at some point, one single server was costing us uh, upwards of 10 grand a month. You know, we could hire someone to, at that price to, uh, to maintain it for us. Um, and this is when we, uh, you know, this is with 200,000 members, right? Uh, our, our, we were sort of, our social data was exploding at its seams. Um, just with, you know, with really not, and we don't even have the millions of members that we want to have. Um, so, uh, the, the, we looked at sort of the way that we were accessing our data, and it was pretty clear that we needed to do something about our database situation. Um, we looked at all other kinds of databases, um, HBase, you know, uh, 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 lots of other kinds of databases. And it's, it's a very tricky question, what database should you, could you move to? Because every time you ask a person who's an expert on something, they're like, oh, you use that? Oh, that's for girly men. No, no, use my thing. It's really good. The real data scientists use my database. Um, so the the um, so, and we looked at our pattern of um, our pattern of usage, and it turned out that we were doing things either very locally for one person, or we were doing these big aggregation jobs. And we'd already moved to Hadoop type MapReduce frameworks for doing our data ag aggregation jobs. So at some point, um, you know, we were like, what should we do? Uh, we, we have to aggregate. We have to do this thing, and. Um, the revelation that we had at some point last year, which I'm sure uh, uh, other, others have had as well, but uh, I couldn't find this phrase anywhere, uh, which is, it, it's called big data. It's now called big database. Because at a certain point, and I think that point is probably five terabytes, you know, there's experts here who would know better than me, but I think it's about five terabytes. When you hit about five terabytes of data, then most conventional databases just begin to fail. Um, and then you have to start thinking about exactly what your use case is and why you need a database at all. Um, and that's what we, we, we found. And so um, the last little bit here is just uh, for those of you guys who are familiar with Amazon, uh, they do these uh, MapReduce rentals that they call uh, Elastic MapReduce. Um, and so we, we moved our, all of our data to just a storage. It's a, a Amazon S3 st uh, simple storage where it's not even in a database anymore. It's just um, sitting in storage where we can run aggregation jobs on it. You can run, we store it in a way that is Hadoop compatible. Um, and then we created a small cache type MongoDB where basically we, we get the data for a user, we do some computations, we uh, create what is just, uh, just the minimum of what is needed, and everything else we move to S3 and that's where it lives and that's where we run our aggregation jobs. Um, so the, the, um, we, we find that in using, in, in thinking about data, um, it is really, really important to think about the use cases, and if your database is exploding at its seams, and you don't know what, what is the best database solution, um, I would like to give you the option that the best database to pick could be no database. Just think about what, uh, you know, uh, what problems this has now. You know, uh, now you have to worry about uh, duplication and, and other sorts of issues, but um, uh, it frees you up to actually solve the problems that you want to solve and not worry about, um, not worry about things like, oh my god, um, you know, do we need to shard? Or um, now we've run out of the biggest Amazon instance that they have, or um, you know, this won't scale. Right? So now we have a solution that is, because it's purely in storage, it scales. Um, and we can do our jobs on single instances. We can do our jobs in aggregation. Um, that's it. Thanks. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, for the people in the back, that's uh, obviously sits in the front. Um, so we're just going to take a uh, uh, couple of questions. If anybody has a question, otherwise we'll... Yep. Please. Name and company, please. My name is Carlos from Lackey Martin. I just want to ask you, what was the reason to use MongoDB? Because MongoDB is not a relational database. So you use any relational database on, uh, on top of, of MongoDB? Um, we have recently mo started moving part of uh, our database to a relational, uh, to like a MySQL database. Um, uh, the reason for MongoDB was um, it wasn't clear uh, what our data model was going to be because we were sort of experimenting with the different uh, and aggregating lots of different sources of data. And a document database, actually, I mean, I was joking earlier about it being my comfort food uh, sort of database where, you know, if you know nothing else, it gives me comfort to use Mongo. But um, in reality, a lot of the stuff that we get 
is very different. So the way that Facebook gives us data and the way that Google gives us data and the way that uh, you know, LinkedIn gives us data, they're all very, very different. So if you know nothing else and you're not, uh, and I mean, you could try to make the grand schema uh, um, that, that could aggregate everything, but our solution was, look, uh, what do you have? You have this, okay, we're just gonna put it here. We're just gonna put everything there and stack it up and uh, use it as we, uh, as we see fit. So Mongo fits that use case for us. The other thing is we're, we're dealing with money. So the way we deal with our money transactions is very different. Those are logged, those are auditable, those do not move fast and break things. Um, and then we're dealing with this sifting sands of social data, and I think you know, breaking those out separate is an important part of it. Great, one more question here. Richipal on deck. Um, so you said you run um, the aggregations and they end up somewhere. Where, where exactly? Um, uh, yeah, after so uh, the, after the aggregation, they either end up in Mongo or they end up in, uh, in, in like some other database. We have a MySQL database, we have a DynamoDB database, but there, there's databases that we maintain that are intended for like day-to-day -day use, basically, like OLTP type, uh, type databases. So the aggregations compute the scores for all of our members, uh, and the scores end up in, a, in the regular database, which uh, for social data happens to be a Mongo. So the Mongo is serving as a cache type database where the database data for any given person lives temporarily for a where, like if you join, all of your data lives in Mongo temporarily, um, uh, but then some of your data lives in Mongo forever. So some of uh, the data for all our members exists in Mongo at any given point, um, but all of the data for all the people only exists in S3. There's one more question here. I don't I know if you want to take one it. quickly. of the uh, Bitcoin uh, protocol in your transactions in the future? Jeff, this is all you. Oh, <clears throat> well, we, we've spent about three years really focusing on the trustworthiness and the character and someone standing in the reputation, uh, they're standing in the community, which, which we found is how lending worked for hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, what we don't have is transactional history. And uh, I think uh, depending on where we're lending and what the situation is, you know, the, the clearly transactional or money movement uh, can improve lending. What's interesting about uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in general is because of the public blockchain, you can actually tap into that and use that as part of an underwriting process. So, so a lot of potential there. What we also find in the emerging markets is the movement of money is a friction that, uh, that slows innovation. And what we see in places like Kenya where they have M-Pesa is the pace of financial innovation has picked up because they've taken care of the transport layer. So we're watching it closely.